Hello again, it's your old friend Theta, the Monotone Messiah. Many of you have asked me for a tutorial on sniping, but the truth is I personally do not know anything about it. However, I do know some people who are very good at it, and one of the absolute best snipers in the game is the Lonely Viper. Many of you may know him from his YouTube content, and it tends to have a very humorous bent to it, but if you've ever played against him, and if you've been around the VRML for any length of time, you know he is a seriously good sniper. So I've been talking to him, and he put together a fantastic tutorial for all of you out there who are curious about how to get better as a sniper, and he went above and beyond. So first and foremost, thank you to the Lonely Viper for putting this together. And I will say my plan as of right now is to make this into a series with not just Viper, but with several other high-level snipers in this game. Uh, I just need to get everybody together and get the content created. So stay tuned for that. But even if the series doesn't materialize for whatever reason, I know you guys will really enjoy this tutorial. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand it over to the Lonely Viper. Enjoy. A wise man once asked Viper, How do I snipe good in virtual reality? It's a tough question. But I guess I could share with you a few tricks I've got. Maybe, maybe help you along your journey to becoming an acceptable sniper who I can kill. Because you'll never be as good as me. First things first, let's talk about your loadout. Now I don't mean the loadout you bring into the game just yet. I'm talking about what are you holding in your hands in real life? Because if you want to snipe like the best of us, you got to be using a good rifle stock. What's a rifle stock? Some of you may know this. We're talking about a something like a pro tube. I know there are alternatives out there, but hey, pro tube's the way to go. You need consistency, and to maintain consistency, and I'll get into this later in a minute, you've got to be able to deliver shots downrange consistently 90% of the time. So if you want consistency, you want to use something like a pro tube because a pro tube is going to give you the stability you need to make the shot. So that means you can reduce the amount of smoothing you use and therefore get your sight on target faster in the game. So, stock or no stock, I say stock. That's just my personal preference. It's what I use and I love my stock. The next question is smoothing or no smoothing. I use a little smoothing, not too much. I think a bit of smoothing helps because it you know, kind of compensates for some of the jitter or maybe tracking issues you might experience. Don't use too much smoothing because when you try to acquire your targets, you find there's a weird kind of lag with your gun. That's how, it, that's how smoothing works. It kind of slows down your gun movement to compensate. Don't, don't, don't overdo it on the smoothing. Using alt sights. I think of like red dots as training wheels. You know, I don't even use them on my main weapons now. Not unless I'm going for like long range assault rifle shots. So yeah, I'd, pr I'd probably save the points if, if I could. But it's entirely up to you. If you feel like you need an alt sight, if you feel like when targets get close, you gotta flip to that alt sight, you go for it, dude. But I mean, I think a really good sniper can do it without aiming down sights. What weapon do I use? Okay, well that's, again, a matter of preference. In, this ga in, the, in the game that I mainly play onward, one bullet's gonna do the job. You know, one, one bullet's really gonna blow a brain out. That's all you need. However, what you'll find is some weapons are less effective than others. So an M16, for example, will down someone in one hit assuming you hit like center mass upper body or head right and it's going to kill them if it hits the head but the problem is sometimes you hit the arms or the hands and it's a little bit frustrating when you do that you know and they're still alive so some people opt for the more um dmr dmr centric weapons with a 12x scope so you know like uh instead of an m16 some people go for the scar or the emr now i like the emr but i just find that it's not compatible with the stock kind of setup i use so i don't use it but a lot of people do some of the best snipers do i wouldn't say my crook but he gets an honorable mention. I'm just kidding. He's got a great sniper. But my crook uses, for example, a, um, an EMR frequently when he's on Marsoc. And then on Volk, a lot of people use the SKS, myself included. I feel it's a great weapon. Although if you subscribe to the um, to the old school old school way of doing things, you might be like Arsenic, uh, and you might use a, an AK-47. You know, or the AK. I think it's the AKM on the on the support cluster Volk, and it's a good weapon. But I'm not I'm not crazy about it. I mean, the sight's okay. But I don't know. I, again, I just, me personally, how do I do things? Uh, I'm at the level where now I like to use a, a bolt action rifle because when I hit something, I want it to fucking die. I want you to die. One shot. 
I don't want to spend all day trying to double tap your body and get picked up by somebody else on the refrag, okay? Or I don't want to hit your hands and watch you scoot away going, ooh, ooh, I got a boo-boo on my pinky. No. Just no. I'm using a bolt action. No, I'm... No. That's not to say I don't use DMR. So I will still use a DMR when I'm on Volk for a very, very simple reason. Statistically speaking, when you're on Marsoc, your targets are probably going to be stationary defenders. So a bolt action, you know, you can afford to have a lower rate of fire because usually the first shot's going to do the job if you can find somebody. That's not to say you don't need skill. And I've got skill, so bear that in mind. The second aspect is when you're on Volk, chances are your targets are going to be Marsoc and they're going to be moving. So you're going to want a good rate of fire because you may not make the first shot. So trust me when I say this. I would probably stick to DMRs. If you are an inexperienced sniper and you're just picking up for the first time, I would definitely recommend probably taking an assault rifle with the, with the 12X loadout. Choose your optics. I use a 12X because anything less to me is for pussies. Let's face it, you want max zoom, but you don't want max zoom all the time. Here's why. I don't use the second level of 12x zoom very often because I find the stability is a huge headache and currently as the game plays, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Like the game seems to have an issue right now with the way bullets fly and I find they hit below the center of the scope and when you zoom into the second level of 12x, I don't know if it's like an FPS thing or what, but I find my bullets hit a lot lower and it's harder to make the shot. So unless I'm prone and really stable or using a bipod, and we'll get that in a second, I'm probably not going to use a second level zoom on the 12X unless it's downfall and I'm prone or something. Bipods. Should you use a bipod? To IMO, just my, just my take, hot take, noobs. Absolute noobs. Only noobs use bipods. I do not use a bipod because I think bipods require you to be stationary. And I think the best snipers like, again, myself and maybe honorable mention to a substandard sniper like my crook, you know, they move a lot. They're, they're staying moving. The real skills and keep moving. You watch Dr. Disrespect playing PUBG or something or, or Warzone. He doesn't stay still when he snipes. He's moving. He's moving constantly because he knows he's going to get shot at. And in Onward, you're not going to have any, you're not going to be able to take a lot of bullets. But for sure, if you're keeping a low profile and you're moving, it's a lot harder for another sniper to pick you up. So take it from me. It's worth moving but if you're again are just picking up the sniper you, you're, you're adjusting the parallax then maybe a bolt a, 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 a bipod's not wrong for you that's the way you want to do things some people have had great success that i think i've seen people i think jamie or someone on the old pacifist team used to use i've seen people use it to great success and they've had killer shots because that stability is insane and you can center the scope really effectively however you are use, useless in a moving situation. And that's important because for someone like me who can do no scopes and stuff like that and use a rifle almost, you know, in a combat scenario, I'm as effective as a, a rifleman with a assault rifle 12X setup or even sometimes a DMR setup because I'm able, I've trained so much that I'm able to acquire and shoot my targets without aiming down the sights or compensating for not having to aim down the sights. And I don't need a training wheels, uh, you know, canted sight to do that either. They're too expensive. I don't. I don't waste my points on those. So that's my take on bipods. Preferably not. I wouldn't even train with them because personally, I think that the real skill of sniping is being able to be mobile and be able to to, to snipe while also still being an effective CQB uh, element in your team. So I would I would encourage you not to spend too much time on uh, on bipods. Knowing when and when not to take the shot. Sometimes a fast moving t someone who's fast peeking or you know they're just zipping around that corner it's not worth taking the shot you know they're just going to give away your position wait for them to get sloppy wait for them to get complacent or do you know what call them out and have one of your teammates who has a bloody lmg to take them out you know some of this just saturation fire that shit or saturate that corner um also by trigger discipline i'm also referring to knowing your trigger dead zone so every controller has a dead zone on the trigger um so if you use like for like me i use vive ones i know there's a pretty big freaking controller dead zone and the time the time between you starting to use the trigger squeeze or pulling that trigger and the time between you actually hitting the edge of that dead zone and firing the shot you can wind up throwing your shot off significantly um from that motion itself so i mean especially when you've got when it's it's down to the millimeter at long ranges so it's super important that you know where that trigger dead zone is and you're operating at the edge of that dead zone so there's absolutely a hair between the shot and the kill because if there's more travel time you're gonna throw off your shot you're gonna miss so bear that in mind so why are you sniping that's the first question sniping is a specialized 
tool for your team, okay? It's going to give you really stupidly freaking tight angles. And it's really effective in certain situations where you know the enemy team is going to be holding tight angles on your approaches, okay? So you can slip into those tight angles, revealing the absolute minimal amount of your body's profile to get that shot off. And chances are, if the enemy's holding tight angles, they're also stationary. The second aspect of it. It's good for long range combat. You can make picks. Some maps like Downfall are really useful for that. Some people sit in windows. I know, right? They do it. And they just look for you to walk into their line of sight. Um, or they're looking out across the map and they're easy kills. And you'll pick those up super handy. Also gives you opportunities to pick out people who are moving off in the distance. Although moving shots at range are much harder. And I encourage everybody, if you want to do that sort of stuff, go to the shooting range and practice, 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 practice. Because, um, you know, you're just, you're just not going to make those shots. The, the, amount of, the amount of bullet lead you have to. And also as well, if you are leading targets at long range, the second level of zoom on the 12x is not going to help you. Because you almost have to aim so far ahead of them that they're they're outside the view of the scope sometimes so i would encourage you to probably not use that too often especially if you anticipate having to deal with moving targets um but knowing your angles is so critical knowing your angles as a sniper is how you are effective it's not enough just take a sniper off into a battle and look for an opportunity you need to kind of know which opportunities are going to pop up because you only have five minutes and if you sit there all day scanning the map you're probably going to waste everyone's time and wind up with one minute left on the clock being completely out of position and useless to your team. So being a good sniper isn't just about being able to make crack shots. It's also about positioning and time management. Because while you are looking for long shots, it means you are further away from the objective. If you're further away from the objective, it means you've got a longer distance to go when it comes to crunch time to push. And if you don't want to be a waste of space in your team and force your team to fight 4v5 or less, then you make sure you get your ass into position at the right times. So you check the angles you need to check and you don't waste too much time. When you get better with your teammates, you will start looking at bait tactics. Sometimes people don't peek all the time. And you might get lucky and slip past them, but there's some weird Murphy's Law that whenever you look at a window, no one's there. And as soon as you run out, they're there. You know what I mean? So what I would say to you is consider coordinating with your team using smokes or suppression or even bait fire where someone just shoots you know, at something just to get the, get the guy to peek out and give you the shot you need. You will only get one shot. That's why I use a bolt action sometimes, because you're only going to get one shot. If you miss it, they're going to hide again, and they probably will never peek again or take, or take a different position and angle on your location. So remember to do that, and always, always move. When you take a, take a couple of shots, reposition, because somebody's going to look for another angle on you, or the defender's going to figure out where you are, they're going to drop a frag in your location, or they're going to do something to screw up your day. Be aware of that. So to be an effective sniper, time management, okay, super important. You also need to be conscious of your angles and you need to be conscious of what kind of psychological pressure you're applying to the enemy team. Because I'm not due to my own horn here. When I am on the field on downfall, teams have to play more conservatively because I will fuck their shit up. I will pick them from miles away. They will never see me coming and I will drop them full sprint perpendicular to my sniper rifle or not. I will kick their asses. So teams have to play more conservatively. And that plays into how you should play them because if you think a team's going to play more conservatively you need to spend less time haunting your angles more time looking for bait picks more time looking for tighter angles on your targets don't spend all day sitting in the back scanning because you are going to waste your time and time is so goddamn precious so be aware you will create that psychological pressure if you are a good sniper and maybe it won't happen on the first round maybe once you get a couple of picks on round one round two they'll start playing a bit more conservatively and they'll be a bit more cautious of you and that's when you know you can yeah, you know, behave a little differently and theta can talk more to how you can take advantage of that but psychological pressure is a huge factor and then also your psychology is a huge factor because you can out psych yourself on shots you can totally throw yourself off if you 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 if you've trained enough you instinctively know where the bullet's gonna go but if you second guess that you're gonna miss so don't second guess your instincts trust your instincts if you've trained enough um if you haven't got a shitload of training you know just just double check your sight positioning okay double triple check your sight positioning make sure your sight is the center of your view on your your dominant eye which is usually your right eye okay make sure it's hitting the right spots so that way your it's bullets are going to go where you expect them to go you the most likely or most best potential for consistency but one of the key takeaways you need to get from this if nothing else you listen to nothing i've said all video and that's okay because i'm me and i tend to be full of shit don't beat yourself up for missing it's okay to miss sometimes you're gonna miss the best of us miss the easiest fucking shots because you get in your own head you know you're under time pressure you know your clock's ticking down 30 seconds left it's gonna happen 
it's going to happen. The only way you can beat that is don't go hard on yourself. Don't tilt. You can check out Theta's videos on tilt and there's, they're really good, but don't beat yourself up for not getting it perfect. Accept it for what it is. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. Again, being a good sniper is about time management, knowing your angles, knowing when to shoot, good trigger discipline. Um, you know, knowing how to coordinate with your team and be effective, knowing, how to, knowing when to push with your team. And also, just mainly about being consistent, okay? You gotta practice your mechanical skill. You gotta have the knowledge for the sidelines. You gotta have your breathing, you gotta have the right mentality. Um, that's kind of all I got for now. Uh, I think I've talked about all my main tricks. So, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe to Theta. And if you don't, I'm gonna shoot you. So yeah. I hope you learned as much as I did from watching that tutorial. My original plan when I came up with the idea for a sniping tutorial was to just talk to high level snipers, maybe do a Q&A with some audio or something like that. And when I talked to Viper about it, what I initially did was just sent over a bunch of questions and I expected him to send me back maybe an audio file or something. And instead he sent me back a complete tutorial which as far as I can tell is the best onward sniping tutorial out there. So once again, gigantic thank you to the Lonely Viper. And if you don't already, subscribe to him on YouTube. I will drop a link in the description for you to do that. His other content is worth checking out. He's also currently on Boss Fight, so if you watch VRML matches, support his team, watch the cast there, and see him in action because it's impressive. I was going to add some additional context at the end, but... It's such a complete tutorial, I don't think that's necessary. So for now, I'll just say this is Theta, aka the Monotone Messiah, signing off.